Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in yet again. So I'm still going through the uh, Blade Show acquisitions. Um, it's taken me forever. I've had a lot going on personally, um, just with work and life, and so I've been pretty drained just uh, emotionally and physically. So anyways, um, enough about me. We're going to talk about the Riot Jack. And um, let's just quickly show you what it ships with. Yes, this is covered in dog hair. It fell off a table onto the floor and my dog promptly laid on it. So anyways, uh, we're going to look at this one in a little bit, well, in detail, I suppose. Um, specs, overall impressions, details. Um, Riot is now showing pictures of this one on their Instagram. It looks like it's, you know, kind of pending landing at dealers in the next couple of weeks here. Um, so Coming up pretty quick. Uh, what is today's date? Today is the uh, 25th of July. So, um, when was Blade Show? About, uh, we'll call it two months ago. So, it, you know, they're coming to market way, way quicker than I thought they would with this model. I thought it honestly would be like six months considering how ambitious of a build this is. But, anyways, let's get into it. So, um, the Riot Jack debuted at Blade Show. It is an integral. You guys know how I feel about integrals. And this is, well, one of the nicest, possibly, arguably the nicest production integral that has come out. And the price is very, very fair. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Let's start out, well, give you guys a quick look in case you're going to tune out in the next minute here. But um, it is an integral. It is a frame lock. It does have carbon fiber inlays here, this marbled carbon fiber. Um, let's jump into the specs here. So we've got the... Kershaw Dividend, picking up our small size comparison, and then for the normal size comparison, we do have the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 with the Flytanium Scales. So hopefully that gives you guys kind of an idea of how large this knife is. But uh, open, you know, overall length is like 9.25 inches, so it is a beast. Blade length is right around 4 inches, handle length is about 5 and a quarter. Blade thickness is coming in at 0 0.157, so, you know, again, fairly thick blade stock. Look at it next to the pair there. Um, so that, again, hopefully that helps give some clarity here to the actual size of this knife. And um, M390, this one has the belt satin finish. Um, overall, there's going to be like 18 different variations of this knife, um, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but this one does weigh in at 7.05 ounces, so again, it's not light by any means. Um, it uses ceramic bearing, ceramic detent. Um, it was designed by uh, David Deng is the owner of Riot Knives, and his brother is an engineer that works for the company. His American name is Jack, and so that's why this model is called the Jack. And he also, um, you know, he designed this knife, and he basically created, I don't know if invented is the right word, but the bearings go in through, I think the lock side, like everything goes in through the side instead of trying to slide it down into the frame, which, you know, is one reason why we're getting such tight tolerances on these as compared to, um, you know, let's say like the, you know, the lion steel knives, um, where things go through the top, where they're, you know, sandwiched in the blade there. Anyways, we won't belabor that point too much, but yes, so um, the thickness of the handle is coming at like 0 0.6 inches. Let's, you know, again, see if I can just show you guys how thick that handle is, but look at the beautiful construction here on this backspacer. Um, the machining to do that on um, a, a contoured integral backspacer um, fairly difficult, I would assume, uh, totally worth it, whatever pain and suffering it caused. So, all right, let's move these out of the way. Let's talk about some of the different variations that are coming, because again, there are a crap ton of them. Um, so you do have the belt satin finish like this one. You have a hand satin finish. Uh, you have a damascus steel blade. Um, I think there's a fourth one as well. There might be a fourth blade finish, I don't recall. Now for the handles, some of them will just be bead blasted gray. You have some that are anodized bronze, some that are anodized blue, and then this one is of course torched. Um, they took a torch to it, they flamed it to get that color, which you know was a big draw for me. Um, you know, as far as blade show goes, this like I knew this one was coming and I was excited to check it out. I really had no intention of purchasing it. 
Um, but it was so nice in the hand, so well executed, um, beautiful design overall that, you know, I really felt like the 450 bucks for it was kind of a bargain, especially when you consider that some of the more basic integrals out there are like coming in at 425 on the low end, and some of the new ones that are coming out have projected prices of over 500 that are not nearly this complex. Um, you know, it again, even though it's expensive, it still has some degree of value built in to an execution this nice. So anyways, um, kind of have this like double harpoon blade here, um, slightly upswept blade. Uh, it's obviously a lot of nice belt. It's beautiful. Uh, it has a flat grind, but just really, really nice. Jimping isn't really effective, but, you know, again, with these, you know, kind of these harpoon grooves at the top here, your thumb has a really nice spot to sit. And this knife, I guess you could choke even further forward if you wanted to get more control on it. I don't really know if anyone who buys this knife is really going to, to use it to the capabilities that this knife is capable of, but, um, you know, in theory. So, got lint all over it. I've carried this one numerous times. Flipper tab, a little jimpy on the front, works really well. Action is very smooth. I think that there's more, like I, I feel like this knife, if I took it apart and cleaned it and used a different lubricant, I could actually get it smoother, but I have not ventured to try and disassemble this knife. Um, the Riot Future, their other integral that I have, the pivot was red Loctited and I stripped the threads on it trying to disassemble that one. Um, which I'm still mildly upset about, so I've not tried to mess with this one because it's it's pretty good uh, as far as the action goes right now. It's actually very, very good. It's just, you know, the, the inner child in me wants to see if I can get it better, which I think I could, but anyways, that's where we're at. Again, M390 blade steel. Um, it's either M390 or dam steel, so uh, very high quality stuff. Dam steel pivot collars. It looks like this is going to be on all the production models. Um, you know, not just like they weren't special edition ones at Blade Show, which I wasn't sure about. So it looks like all the pictures of the ones that are coming out, they all have the damn steel um, pivot collars, which is very, very cool. It's a nice touch. Subtle, but um, catches the eye, certainly. As you guys can see, we've got these marbled carbon fiber inlays or overlays, however you want to, you know, think about it. Um, still full integral construction, but then they milled you know, a good portion out of the sides here to put in this carbon fiber. You know, coming in at 7.05 ounces, um, I'm sure that putting in the carbon fiber here actually saved a fair bit of weight. Um, the other versions that I have meandered away from, they do have ones with uh, copper inlays, and those are heavy, heavy-ass knives. Those were like 10.5 ounces. I handled them at Blade Show you have to like a really heavy knife <laughs> in order for that one to be a viable option for you. I mean, you know, seven ounces is fairly heavy, but over 10 is um, crazy. So, you know, it's going to be one of the nicest 10 ounce knives you've ever owned. There's no question, but um, mildly excessive. So you guys can see how the stop pin is kind of input in there. And then again, the back, well, the spine, it's not a backspacer with the integrated lanyard hole. All the nice milling, it's contoured. The knife in general is completely contoured, so it, it feels so incredibly premium in the hand. It just has such an amazing feel to it. And you know, this knife is deceptively large. Um, in pictures, it's like, oh, that doesn't seem too big. Even now in the closed position in my hand, it's like, oh, that doesn't look too big. And when it's sitting in my knife case, I'm like, oh, it's not that big. And then I pick it up and I open it and I get it in the hand, I'm like, damn, that's big. So, um, Anyways, there are a lot. I understand there are going to be a lot of that's what she said jokes in there, but you guys are going to have to run with me on it. So, uh, pocket clip, really well executed, beautifully uh, functional. Um, it's got this nice little, I don't know, checkered pattern. I don't, kind of goes with it. Might add a little extra grip if you pinch your pocket clip to pull it out. I hope you don't do that. It doesn't really work well, but. Um, I think more pocket clips, I think that would work better here, kind of around the screws. may not look terribly attractive, but when you pull it out of your pocket like this... Um, anyways, I wish someone would, would implement that on their pocket clips to make it easier to extract knives. Um, pro tip, someone someone do that for me. 
then everyone can do that. So, you know, again, fit finish, exceptional. Uh, Riot has um, definitely proven themselves over the years, so um, it's not even really a question anymore. So anyways, again, unexpected for me. Um, I, you know, I knew I'd like it, but it just wasn't like on my wish list. Uh, but I, I couldn't walk away from it. Um, had to have it. So, finger choil, uh, uh, moderately useful. Um, I'm getting a little nervous here. I think you have smaller hands. You might be okay, but if you have smaller hands, I don't know that you necessarily want this knife. So, yeah. You know, if, if you don't carry knives this large and you bought it just to have it, I don't think you'd be upset. Um, this is one that I think I'd be okay with sitting in my knife case if I didn't even carry it. Um, it's just really that well executed. Love the blade shape. Love the contouring. Love the materials. Love the flame titanium. Um, I really do like everything about this knife. So, really, really well done, uh, Riot Knives. Um, you know, again, there have been a lot of other videos up to this point. Perhaps you guys have seen some of them, perhaps not. Um, but it looks like these are hitting dealers in the next few weeks. So, I mean, if you really want one, I don't, I don't want to make any predictions. They're going to sell out like crazy or anything. But, um, you know, definitely be aware of which dealers are getting them in and kind of keep your eye on the drop if you are interested. So, anyways, that, I don't know, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that answered some questions. Um, a lot of cool stuff coming out this year. Um, this is one of the best integrals. The other one that I'm super excited for is the Custom Knife Factory Satori. No idea when that one's coming. It seems like it keeps just getting pushed further and further off, but um, that's that's the other one that's on my wish list for this year. So anyways, thanks again for watching. Um, you know, thanks for clicking the like button or the dislike button or interacting or whatever it is the hell that you do, but um, really appreciate you guys, so take care.